Welcome to Hail Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hail Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Welcome to it Thursdays here at Tail Bar City Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. We celebrate opening day, Masters Thursday, National Beer Day, with being pelted by ice on the way in. Yeehaw, spring in Nebraska. It'll be okay, though, for you for the spring game Saturday. And I want to see you down at Single Barrel tomorrow, 4 to 6. Roadshow Friday ahead of. Spring football, and of course, Nebraska baseball against Rutgers. We'll dive into Nebraska against UNO shortly. We'll talk some spring football and what this weekend is about. Is it more for on the field for you as a Nebraska fan, what you see, whether it's offense, defense, whether it's traditional red versus white, or is it about the off the field, the plethora of talent that is going to be invading the capital city when it comes to classes for 2023, 2024, and some instant impact guys in Oshawn Mathis. Numbers to get in, 466-3776, 466-3776-800-825-5865. Find us on Twitter at Schmidt underscore radio or at Herbal Essence for Elijah Herbal. You can email Chris at Hale Varsity. Dot com. We'll get it all covered. We'll talk a little golf. We'll spend time with spring football. Brandon Vogel in 20 minutes. In hour two, uh, some uh, futures predictions when it comes to uh, Danny Burke. Pride of Chicago, Burke's best bets. He'll have his thoughts on MLB futures and who you like or who maybe you should think about taking if you are going to get down that way with uh, a, a wager, perhaps. Uh, Gary Barnett will get his take on sealing the deal uh, if you're Nebraska and Mathis and what you can do to showcase a guy like Riola that's going to be on campus for you, a really talented future quarterback and some of Nebraska's ins, how they get that handled to continue to to, to, to water that plant, that planted seed with uh, a, f- a future quarterback that, that took a visit. And then uh, we'll kick off Hour 2, all things baseball, Nebraska and Major League with uh, MLB standout and Husker standout Jabba Chamberlain will get us going in Hour 2. You have the numbers to get in, and uh, Husker baseball is where I'm going to start. The good news, Nebraska rallied. Nebraska was in position. The bad news, same result and a familiar result to a team that I'm not going to scoff at. I think UNO is gritty. I think UNO has a pretty good record. And quite frankly, they're not scared looking at their non-conference, right? Uh, they are they they gear up for this. I don't think Nebraska was not paying attention to UNO. I mean, it's been heart rate city for the first two ball games between these two teams, but you just can't. You just can't get in your own way momentum-wise as you're trying to ramp up with Rutgers at 22-6 and six coming in. And you, you had a streak going. You were feeling good. You whacked Ohio State, and Nebraska trailed 6-1 to one and fell short 6-5. to five. Gomez up to, to bat at the end of the ball game after crushing a three-run bomb into, uh, dare I say, vicious wind. He launched that thing. Good for for Gomez, and man, he was right there. And then it got a little chippy afterwards. Nothing too much to write home about except hurt feelings for Nebraska and UNO talking it a little bit. Uh, not a great outing for Drew Christo. That's okay. Uh, just his second start of the season. Uh, kind of a familiar struggle to his first start when it came to control. And that freshman will be a major talent for Nebraska. So plenty of time for Christo to get it going. But the results the same as UNO scored three runs just off of three hits in the first inning. It was the start that did in Nebraska. And you had people in position to tie or take the lead with this late surge, Elijah. Nebraska couldn't get it done at the plate. 
Yeah, that, it was. I mean, just disappointing at the end when you have uh, bases loaded, one out. I mean, runners on first and second with no one out. You get the bases loaded with one out, and then back to back strikeouts to to finish the game. And both of those strikeouts came on decent pitches to hit. To be honest, and a lot of three two counts. A lot, a lot of three two counts, and Sartori got a, a fastball. Of, I mean, middle away, looked like a great pitch to hit, and he swung right over the top of it. And uh, same story with Gomez, pretty much. So it's it's coming down to the missed opportunities. Yet again, um, rearing their ugly head, runners in scoring position, just unable to, to do your job with with the bases loaded and one out. I know it's easier said than done, but all you got to do is get that ball into play, preferably into the outfield. It does not matter if it's a hit. Uh, I mean, sacrifice fly gets it done. Uh, a hard grounder, most likely, uh, gets it done as long as it's not to one of the corners. So that to a shorter second, they're probably going to try to turn two and you got to beat it out. But there's a lot of opportunities to get that run into score from third. And the Huskers, yet again, I mean, game after game, feels like failed to get that done. Well, what you got to do is is flush it, come into Rutgers, PO'd, quite honestly, and look to, uh, to take it out easier said than done. This weekend against the Scarlet Knights, you still have a chance to make some more headway in uh, the Big Ten. But, you know, with, uh, with, with Gomez's three-run shot to give Nebraska life, that eighth-inning strikeout killed momentum, uh, that, the momentum of the home run. And following that in the ninth, you mentioned with uh, just finding ways to, to not get it done with, with the bases full. And uh, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. So for Nebraska, 635 tomorrow night, Friday night against Rutgers. Swing on by the graduate and uh, inside the single barrel to get a, a, a steak and a beer. Before you head off to uh, Haymarket, you have a uh, 3.17 start time on Saturday, high noon for Sunday. And I know those games uh, will be on uh, BTN Plus, which is, um, is an option. Go in person is also uh, an option. But Rutgers is someone you don't really want to mess with. They come in, and uh, it's Nebraska's job right now. I mean, you're going to have to get Shea to uh, to have a really good outing. He's two and three right now. Uh, Kohler's five and zero oh for Rutgers. Uh, TBA for the starting pitching Saturday. No Cody Frank here in this rotation here uh, as uh, Sunday. It's going to be McCarville. So uh, there is that. Uh, Rutgers is uh, five and one in Big Ten, and uh, they are very juicy on offense. And I'm not I'm not implying anything. I'm just saying they can mash. And uh, Nebraska's pitching needs to be on point. Nebraska's defense needs to be on point. We'll see what type of offensive production Nebraska can get. As always, uh, how about you get off to a good start? That always helps things. Yeah, and for as disappointing as dropping that game was last night, I mean, in the grand scheme of an entire season, if you lose a midweek game, it's okay. Even if it's against a team like UNO. I mean, you just saw, was it Grand Canyon uh, had a series sweep? They had a couple of midweek games against, I believe, Texas Tech. And uh, they went and swept them in these midweek games. I mean, the, the midweek games are a time for some deeper guys in the bullpen to get a chance. You, you can play one, around with your lineup a little bit because you, you know if you drop the game, it's going to be okay in the long run. What really matters is these weekend conference series, especially a series against a team in Rutgers, which is trying to, to vie for one of the top spots in the league this season. You need to go in there and say, no, we're still Nebraska. Uh, we still out-talent you on paper, and we're, we're going to beat you. I mean, that, that's just what you got to do. It's You, you got to put extra emphasis on these weekend series games uh, slates, especially against a team like Rutgers, which has been pretty hot to start the year. We'll get Jabba Chamberlain's take on Nebraska baseball as they head into Rutgers' reaction to UNO less than an hour. Spring football, so let's answer the question, is this weekend more about off the field than on the field for Nebraska? And coaches and, and guys currently on the team, it's totally about finish, finishing it strong and and not getting hurt and just kind of showing the fans and yourself what all those reps that you've accumulated over spring football can do in a, a game simulated situation. So I'm I'm anxious to see some of the young guys on the defensive line uh, kind of join Ty Robinson and stepping up. That's been a bit of a theme, stepping up. Who's going to step up on that defense at the JoJo spot? Who's going to step up in the secondary for uh, three-fourths of that back end 
uh, graduating? Who's going to step up on the defensive line with no D Boogie and Stilly for the first time in a long time? Who's going to going to run with um, with Ty Robinson and, and well <laughs> not run try and stop the run flipping it over offensively? What do you get from Piper and Hickson? Hickson and Piper center spots a new look for the first time in a while. What are some of the guys that have been on campus for a while and they have a lot of snaps, they want better snaps. Uh, what have they been able to do progress-wise? And some of the new faces. Clearly, uh, what you have on offensive line, there, there's new faces that are going to get work. But you're, you're going to see and kind of get a chance to react to some of the new faces. Uh, when you look at Anthony Grant at running back, you look at Palmer at wideout, and, of course, Casey Thompson. Those are the you know on-field uh, guys that have all of our attentions. And you're not going to – anoint anyone a Heisman candidate or an all big 10 based on a spring game. But what you do see, whether a guy has been inconsistent or a little bit up and down, maybe during spring, during practice, when it's a game like situation. And this comes to my mind because of Adrian, his first spring game was he came out and he balled. That was the best he looked all spring. If you go back and uh, kind of sift through the, the post game, Hey, when the lights were on, he stepped up. He's a gamer. You'll find maybe some guys that are gamers or guys that, that maybe shrink in the spotlight, but at least get that experience on Saturday in front of maybe 50,000 plus. Don't kid yourself. This weekend is as important off the field as well. When you look at the uh, incredible prospects that are going to be on campus, you got to feed that lifeblood that is you're recruiting and O'Shawn Mathis, give him a reason to say yes, right? He's going to graduate really good article by Evan Bland of the World Herald who caught up with O'Shawn's mother and uh, O'Shawn's backstory is he and his siblings uh, in a, uh, in a, in a economically uh, hit area in, uh, you know, just uh, around the Austin region. He has a chance to graduate from TCU here in a month and then go get paid by somebody to get taken care of for his family uh, via NIL. But, oh, yeah, by the way, go ball out for one more football season and then get drafted high. Uh, That's that's this path for him right now. Who's going to take care of him best? Who's going to who's going to allow him to thrive? And, you know, Texas is is probably your favorite. But Nebraska is going to give one hell of a pitch uh, when it comes to Hey, we, we got to have you, man. And everyone needs a guy like Mathis. Uh, but, but Nebraska truly, truly needs. There's, there's other guys at Texas, when you look at the pass rush, that are, are probably more comparable to Mathis. You just don't have a pass rush guy that's proven himself yet. You've got guys that have gotten better at it, but it's what's been missing for Nebraska on the defensive end uh, is getting after the quarterback. You have Dylan Riola, a stud quarterback. The world wants him. You've got the inside track from a family standpoint and a familiarity standpoint. Your dad and your uncle doesn't get much more uh of a, of a ringing endorsement or advertisement, but that said, uh, it, it's going to be the the kid's choice. And Clemson's put guys into the NFL. Bama's on a, a a pretty special heater right now, not just with first round, but we're talking top three, okay, or top ten picks to the NFL. Before it was all, and it's still linemen for Alabama, offensive and defensive or running backs or wide receivers. Alabama's decided to put quarterbacks into the first round right now the last several years. It is so vital for Nebraska. There's some in-state kids as well that uh, you want to make sure you lock up Tyson Terry, a really high-level prospect. He's not uh, until 2025, but a wrestler, a stud ball player out of Omaha North. You want to make a good impression on, of course, Mav Noonan, a really talented kid from just up the road that's going to be on hand. And uh, just a slew of positions you need to fill. That is offensive line, that's defensive linemen, that's linebackers, that's quarterbacks. We'll run down the, the hit list from Greg Smith in a little bit, just some of the names to listen for. But it's, uh, I, I would say it's, it's 50-50. Get out of Saturday with a good showing, but, but make the experience memorable, not only for guys that can carry it forward that are on the team, but put the wow in it 
uh, with the fan base and uh, Husker Nation and the showcase that is part of what is uh, a- another air quote home football Saturday when it comes to showcase. Spring game's different than your, your night game Michigan moment. Totally get it. But this is, uh, this is your appetizer uh, when it comes to trying to get that uh, dotted line signed. Well, I would even add, I mean, you want to stay healthy, A, yeah, put on a good display for the recruits. And then I, I think the third most important thing here is to give the, the people that talk about the Huskers in radio something to talk about over the next couple of months. I think that's going to be oh, huge. That's what I'll be watching you, for. You're asking for eight <laughs> weeks. I was going to give you two hours on Monday and maybe a half hour Tuesday. No, nah, I'm talking like something like completely shocking, like – uh, Did you see Bobby Newcomb's option, option <laughs> keep as he took it 95 yards? I'm Did talking, you see I'm, the motion offense by that West Coast offense and Bill Callahan in I, 2004? I, I'm talking like I want some like 250 rushing yards from Brody Belt, something we can be like, you wow. Want Bro- <laughs> you want Brody to be that spring game. He's just stud. There's a kid. I mean, God, he, I mean. It, it kind of lines up well for him if you're – if you're going to be running the ball a lot and getting some of those guys a little further down the depth chart, a lot of play time trying to keep the ones healthy. There's a, there's a back that looked absolutely incredible named Chris Butler that ran for a buck 50 in one of the spring games I covered. I think I was doing radio for KRNU, and Chris Butler goes for a billion yards and then transfers to Auburn, never to be heard from again. Brandon Vogel's on the way with Hale Varsity. And now, and now back to Hale Varsity Radio. You know, I predict he has got an old style in hand and a brat on the grill since it's opening day, and he's locked into the old cubbies. Brandon Vogel with us on HaleVarsity.com and Magazine. Managing editor at Brandon L. Vogel on Twitter. Am I off or are you wearing your Cubs jersey? <laughs> No, I always break out the hat for opening day, though. So that's about as far as we got. That old style and brat sounds pretty good, but uh, unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be in my future. Well, you know, Junior just yeah. is chiming in. He wants two brats. Uh, I will. I will not put you on the spot about the old style. <laughs> Uh, it hasn't been that rough of a day yet where we've had to consider that. So uh, we'll just uh, we'll keep we'll keep the keep the Cheerios coming, and, and hopefully that'll uh, keep him keep him at bay for at least another couple minutes. Now, are are you going to be pressuring the little guy into a into a, a, a Cubs fandom, like a, a life of pain, being a Cubs fan wow. as well? Or is is that what you're going to be? I'm a Rockies <laughs> fan. I can say it. I live a life of pain too. But like. Are you going to push that upon him, or are you going to let him make his own choices, maybe be a Dodgers fan? Yeah, I'll probably let him make his own choices. I, I would I would have a tough time with the Braves, though. I mean, theoretically, that's probably the first baseball game we'll get to. Uh, and, you know, unless I move to Denver, then we can make it the Rockies. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it unfolds. You know, so many people of my age, you know, Braves or Cubs, because mm-hmm. those are the teams you could watch no matter where you were at, thanks to uh, the old super stations. But now, you know, you can watch anyone anywhere. So I'd be okay with the Rockies if, uh, if that's how it played out. I'm going to leave the gummies uh, comment and, 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 and insinuation <laughs> off to the side, Elijah, as to why you cheer for the Rocks, babe. No, uh, I was pressured into it by my family. All okay. from Denver. Okay, okay, that's that's fine. <laughs> sure, sure, whatever. So, is it a deal breaker if he's a car? If if, if he's a dad, I like the cards. I mean, is that just a, the, does that drop the gloves time? Yeah, we, we'll take the Braves over that, though, really. Like, I guess St. Louis is probably the next closest team. So, yeah, I forgot. I hadn't even thought about that. Thank you for reminding me. You're going to have to take some defensive measures, at least on that front. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, just just let him know that, you know, St. Louis is the reason that, that Oscar the Grouch has to live in the garbage can. Make something up, I, I guess is my point. <laughs> so, spring football, Vogues, uh, there's – we were just talking about, you know, off the field, the pomp and circumstance and the, and the selling and the recruitment that is very real. And Nebraska's got a lot of talent coming in uh, on the field. It's culmination into uh, a lot of hard work. What, what, what sways you? Is it more about off the field or is it on the field? And, and it, it should be on the field, but we just don't know what we're going to get Saturday format wise. Yeah, we don't know what we're going to get format-wise, and it becomes harder and harder, I think, each year to, 
even if, you know, it weren't these sort of circumstances where everyone's a little more secretive because you got new staff and maybe there's an edge there, so on and so forth. Um, like, it just becomes, it, it, it's strange. Like, I feel like the, the, the spring game has gotten to a point where we actually see less football and it probably tells us less uh, about the team. But it gets treated more and more like a game day. So I think when you're assessing this, you kind of got to look at it from that perspective. I mean, Nebraska has an absolutely huge visitor list this week. And, I mean, the best thing that could happen for 2022 Huskers is if a, a certain transfer defensive end were to, were to pull the trigger. And I think that's kind of where we're at with spring games now. Same here. I mean, it's it's you got to have the showcase to, to wow the, the visitors and keep them either coming back or, or say yes now, uh, either via portal or, or high school or, or JUCO. Brandon Vogel's with us. So, Vogues, as we talk about, you know, kind of the new offense, the new setup, and I really enjoyed Ty Robinson's take after after practice the other day where, all right, I know the offense has got the headlines. I know there's a lot of new faces, but he's anxious to show what the defense can do people are concerned about the offense meshing, right? I, I think the the belief is there that it, it could be really good with some of the new pieces. They're concerned about how quickly it can come around. But I think there's concern, too, about the defense stepping back. And it doesn't sound like Ty Robinson wants to hear that. No, and that's, the you know, he, he's the right kind of guy who, who shouldn't want to. And, and Nebraska has a handful of those guys. Um, some guy, you know, I would put Ty Robinson in that category. Garrett Nelson, both those inside linebackers, uh, Quentin Newsom, guys who played well last year, who were kind of, you know, the second wave behind all that veteran talent that Nebraska brought back defensively. And for this defense to, you know, continue progressing or avoid taking a step back, it's going to be up to guys like that. And, so to hear that, hear, hear Ty Robinson's comments this week, I, I took that as a as a pretty good sign because you know there's there's a couple of position groups here on on Saturday and defensive line is one where it's like, well, we're going to see a bunch of guys. I'm not sure how much it's going to look like what things look like in the fall, but so it goes sometimes in the spring. Vogue's a uh, thought here about some of the new faces, the Casey Thompsons, the the Palmers, and uh, of course uh, the. Uh, Grant, the 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 eyeback. Another topic has been swagger. You've got guys that have performed at major programs that are now in Lincoln, but it feels like they've injected some swag. Do you think this team needed that? Yeah, possibly. Uh, I mean, you, you look at the past four years uh, of Nebraska football and. It's it's shocking and still painful about just how much they felt the same. And it's not you know when you get into outside of the records, like none of them were you know utter disasters in my opinion. Like there was enough there where you're like, yeah, I can kind of see it. Like it's it's right around the corner, uh, and you just never turn that corner. So maybe bringing in some guys who who come in and are expected, you know, with these transfers, most of them expected to contribute right away. They've been some other places. They've played in some other leagues, big time football. Um, just something to kind of get Nebraska uh, a little bit of a boost, a little bit of a shock to the system to maybe get them out of just where they've been, which is, you know, really kind of defined by a bizarrely one one sided record in, in one score game. So I think it has the potential to help for that. Um, we'll, we'll see, I guess, when we get to the fall. Um, it might be fun on Saturday, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Well, Brendan, whenever you, you talk about, you know, these new guys bringing in some swagger to this football team, I, I want to take you back through your Rolodex of, of Husker football players. Which, which player in your memory played on the field with, with the most amount of swagger, and what did that bring to the team? Hmm. Um, I mean – Sue certainly had it, and, that, and that's an obvious example. You know, maybe one that uh, isn't so kind of out in the open for everyone to see. You know, Amir Abdullah had it in a really quiet way. Mm. And I think, you know, you saw it early on where Nebraska brought in three running backs in, in that class, and he was kind of, you know, 
the third one based on recruiting profiles, but he was the one who saw the field most consistently as a freshman, uh, did his thing on special teams, and then just was kind of a rock for Nebraska uh, over the next three seasons. And he's kind of the last one that really jumps to the top of my mind um, when, when you talk about just having a little bit of, of the swagger of the ultimate belief in yourself and having that show up uh, on, on the field. It totally showed up. And you just go back to how great Amir was in Lincoln, even as a freshman with his role as a – kickoff guy i mean flipping momentum i think of that fresno state shootout uh pretty big time brandon vogel with us vogues you you spent a lot of time with amir and his family for the yearbook and the cover uh, story did that just pop right immediately even though you, you watched him you got to spend time with him uh in, in his home settings yeah, I wouldn't say it was. I mean, Amir's kind of confidence was, was one that really showed up on Saturdays because going there and, and having the opportunity to meet his family and, you know, just outside of Birmingham, um, like it was kind of the classic support system. And, you know, he has a big family. All his brothers and sisters were there. His, his mother and father were both leaders in the community and in their respective fields. So, you know, getting to experience that, you saw like, okay, well, this is kind of like the dream setup you would hope for, for any kind of football prospect coming out of high school. And so, you know, it, it shows, I think to me at least a little bit that, you know, it, it doesn't have to be kind of the classic in your face brashness of I'm going to get out there and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and then I'm going to do it. Uh, it can also kind of be a little bit quieter. And that's, that's very much what, you know, the way I would categorize the type of confidence we saw from Amir Abdullah. Brad and Vogel with his Vogues to wrap up, and you can catch Vogues tomorrow as well on KFOR at 710. Excited to talk more spring ball with, uh, with Brandon Vogel. So your NIL requirements would be what? If you're going to college mm-hmm. now, what would Vogues want? Would it be a new pickup? Would it be an apartment? Would it be both? Would you want your own radio show? Uh, a a never-ending uh, slew of gift cards to Lazari's. I mean, what are we talking here? Uh, yeah. The vehicle piece is is probably the, would be the toughest one to. Th- that would be at the top of my wish list because then I could be like, you know, technically this is all above board now, but look at me. I got a gold Corvette just like Eric Dickerson, uh, and then and then I would probably rush for as many yards as Eric Dickerson had. Because you know, once you get the gold Corvette, you gotta you gotta back it up. So, yeah, it's it's a car for me. Oh, yeah, you're missing out. Those, some of those downtown apartments, though, the prices are crazy. You know, those athletes are getting them for free. I mean, that's I mean, we're talking eight hundred, nine hundred bucks a month per person, and some of those downtown apartments they're getting them for free. I mean, that's, that's when you uh, really are selective about your roommate. <laughs> <laughs> More so than ever. Well, Vogues, I think you're. I, I love the, the, the gold sports car take, right? And, and Eric Dickerson still laughs about that to this day. Well, I, I guess it depends. Thank you, A&M. But it, it depends if they're giving you that sports car to keep or if it's just like a lease while you're here at Nebraska. That's the question. Well, back, with Dickerson, though, back in the day, what are they going to do, repo it? <laughs> Hello, NCAA. That, that's who's knocking on the door. Vogues, I would think you go four-wheel drive knowing the weather here. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's probably true. Man, you, yeah, you just flipped me. I, I'm going to commit to SEC school now. So, Vogue, right, of course. <laughs> both. Coming to Nebraska. No, you got a two stall garage, brother. You get both. <laughs> you get the four wheel drive, <laughs> and and the sports car. So, well, we'll catch up with you tomorrow uh, over on KFOR. Thanks for jumping in, and uh, keep feeding Junior those Cheerios. Sounds good, thanks. There he is, Brandon Vogel in, in junior in the background. Uh, we'll dive into Tiger Woods. What did the opening round for him say to you? Well, it said wow to the world. We'll dive into it a little bit and more on the visitors coming to Lincoln for the spring game. It's Hale Varsity presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chime in, 402-466-ESPN, or email the show, chris at hailvarsity.com. Just try me. Try me. Back to Hail Varsity Radio.
Thanks for hanging out. Hail Varsity Radio Roadshow. Tomorrow, single barrel. Getting you ready for Husker baseball and, of course, the spring game. Four to six tomorrow, road show. What are your thoughts on the spring game? Come see us. Get a burger, get a beer, get a steak, get uh, the full meat experience with their carving board. It is incredible. Maybe you don't want a beer. Maybe you want a whiskey. Uh, 250 to choose from for you. We're back there Saturday morning. Pre-game show ahead of the spring game, uh, Road Show Hail Varsity Weekend Edition, 930 to 1130. Come by, say hi, get some gear from us, and uh, make your way to 10th and Vine. Enjoy. So Tiger Woods, first competitive round in 509 days. And a 1 under 71 for his opening round at Augusta. Three shots behind Smith and DJ. Wow, right? There's other superlatives and uh, adjectives you can use, but I can't really say what's really going through my mind because you got to add a little mustard to it. That, that's how impressive it was for, for Tiger to come out and do his thing because physically was the, the concern because of the car accident and just not being his old self you factor in his age with the accident and you wonder how he was going to do physically making it through 18 he prepped obviously and it's just one day but the the physical turning mental from the mental strain and being tired because you're you're exerting yourself physically and he is as mentally bulletproof as there is had a couple of hiccups on eight he bogeyed there but he's able to fight back missed a putt able to birdie on six and 16 and when I talk about stamina he had one of his longest tee shots maybe his longest at the end of the round on 17 where he drilled it and he's had to play this thing from memory clearly of course he got out and practiced last week into this week but it is different from from practice to to the real thing and the mental stress of not wanting to go out there a big time accomplishment battling back rehabbing and getting in position to go play but you don't want to go out there and look like garbage because you physically can't do it because of your own ego and and that's what the greats always battle is wanting to go out there compete and win that's what makes them incredible but for him to go out there and be as composed and as good as as he was at his age with his injury on that freaking course is absolutely a masterpiece. You hope you see him Saturday and Sunday. We all hope he, he even if you don't like Tiger, the storyline, the comeback is is incredible. And Tiger's had a, a lot of chances for redemption in his life. But for him to go out there in, in this opening round and shoot a one-under, it can fall apart on you if you're in great shape and perfect health, playing your best. That's how good the course is. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that the, the leg holds up uh, for a second day walking the course, let alone a third or a fourth. I think just making the cut, uh, as we were talking with Shui yesterday, would, would be a big win for Tiger. Uh, but what I saw today showed me that, yeah, right, so right now it looks like he's going to make the cut simply because uh, whenever he was missing shots, he was missing shots for the most part in, in smart places, missing uh, a little bit under the, the pin, um, giving himself some some easy par saves, if you will. And then uh, he was able to come back from some, some disastrous moments where I think it was on 14. He took a divot out on his drive and uh, missed way left into the fans. And uh, a similar thing happened on 18 where the, the, the shot never drew whatsoever and he ended up in the trees, had to take a drop and was still able to save par on 18. So uh, it was just, I mean, vintage Tiger almost with the fact that even whenever he was making quote unquote bad shots, he was able to save par, uh, was able to do pretty well. One under, I think is a, is a big win for Tiger. And I'm excited to see how he responds tomorrow. Is there going to be any, any soreness in that leg come a, a second day walking this course? Is there going to be any fatigue after not having played for so long? But from what I know about Tiger, I, I think he's going to continue killing it this tournament. And I mean, simply making the cut is a win in my book. Well, he's not a go through the motions guy. Let me go out and hear the crowd and, not perform he wants to go out there and destroy the competition we'll see how it uh, it shapes up and is he feeling good enough to go work on what he was 
fallen short on today? Is he going to go rest tonight, or is he going to go practice tonight to get better and try and correct? Uh, he is just magic with uh, what we've been able to watch over the years uh, with his career and uh, just phenomenal for, for where he's at and what he was able to do. He was, due to his, his injury, he's had to adjust. And part of that adjustment's being a little bit more conservative off the box. That, I think, helped him, aside from when he, when he made a couple of mistakes here and there, uh, that, that served him well. Having to force to play conservatively uh, worked out okay today. Yeah, and uh, he was pretty consistently the, the last guy in his group uh, on the drives. He was the first one uh, to go up and hit a shot because he was hitting so short. But then, I mean, his irons still looked like vintage Tiger irons where he was just hitting those things so pure. And great to see Tiger back on the golf course. That's, I was pretty much tuned into Tiger Cam uh, all day today watching the Masters. It was just great to watch him out there on the course. It was uh, something I almost thought we'd never see again. Last thing about Tiger, too. You know, the, the, the story goes on, on his first hole – historically he has only hit 57 percent of the fairways on that first one and he was able to get the first three even so his start was and we talk about this in baseball we talk about it in football we pick a sport how do you, you get up on the right foot or not and and he did uh recruiting monster weekend for nebraska mathis of course uh, the tcu portal uh you have riola can nebraska continue to uh, wow and woo him Tyson Terry out of Omaha North some other names and Greg Smith all over it for you Bo uh, Ashley is a offensive tackle four star that is making the trip also Trey Wilson a big time defensive lineman a four star linebacker to keep an ear out for is uh, Phil Picotti some run, uh, some defensive backs to listen for uh, Braden Marshall Curly Reed and Kalen Lee. Reed and Lee are both 2023 kids. Uh, Maverick Noon in the course. Josh Manning, the wideout. Edric Hill, defensive lineman. Barry Jackson, also some guys to uh, to keep in, in, in mind of for Nebraska as they are rolling out the red carpet big time for all these prospects, 2023, 2024, and 2025. And it should be noted from my experience going back through high school, it's also big, the spring game here for your your under-the-radar guys, those local kids that probably aren't going to get a scholarship offer, but say six months from now, they could be getting a preferred walk-on offer to Nebraska. And when did you get the chance to come out and see a game? Well, it was the spring game. We got to go out and get the red carpet rolled out for uh, for the players then. So that's also something to watch here with these visitors. It's not just the big-name guys. There are some depth guys. Maybe that walk-on three years from now, you say, man, where did this guy come from? Well, he could have been at the spring game on Saturday. Think of the walk-ons Nebraska was able to get that were in-state from the late 2000s, 2008, 2009 through through 2012. And that's the Janoviches, the Spencer Longs, the Brandon Rileys, uh, the Sam Foltes, guys that were incredible ball players that ended up walking on and made monster contributions on some pretty good teams. Yeah, I mean – walk-on class. I mean, we've heard the Frost and company trying to build it back up a little bit, and we're going to get a chance to see a lot of those guys performing on Saturday. We'll wind down hour one. Java Chamberlain, 15 minutes away, his take on opening day and Big Red Baseball. Gary Barnett on this visit weekend for Nebraska. Tail Varsity presented by the Nebraska Lottery. And now. And now back to Hail Varsity Radio. One final time this hour, it's Hale Varsity presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Find us on Twitter at Schmidt underscore radio. And uh, Elijah's Twitter handle is at Herbal Essence. And don't forget the podcast. Subscribe to us, download us, and tell us what you think. Good, bad, ugly. We'll take the feedback and appreciate it. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and uh, just search Hale Varsity Radio. And my reminder to get buckled up. Hands on the wheel, eyes and mind straight ahead. The driver has one job, drive and uh, buckle up. The message from the Nebraska Department of Highway Safety Office. Pretty interesting tweet from uh, Bruce Feldman. It was uh, retweeted by our old buddy Parker Gabriel. But the uh, reality is this. Louisiana student athletes are now cleared to get... NIL deals in high school. We know that 
Uh, Nebraska has a a in-state prospect in Malachi Coleman that's that's doing really great outreach with his NIL deal. And Malachi had a trip to Oregon last weekend and really stud ball player from Lincoln East. So that's that's an example of a high school guy getting an NIL deal. And uh, you have, again, per Bruce Feldman and Parker Gabriel, you have uh, with NIL being a reality now for Louisiana high school students, you got to imagine that Archie Manning is, well, not that he needs it, but is smiling. But A.J. Allen and Dakotas Crawford uh, will be, uh, no doubt, potentially getting theirs. Now, if you were the Manning family, would you sit back and would you look at Arch and say, don't worry about the NIL stuff right now. Work on being a better football player. We'll handle the money side of things. Or do you let him go out there and get his name out there and say, yeah, if you want to go get your NIL stuff, you, you can figure out how it works now before you get into college. It's a weird line to walk saying, yeah, I mean, you have the opportunity to go out and get it, but we want you to focus on football. Or do you want to get that experience before you go to college? Well, I think it depends on, on the kid. I mean, I don't know Arch at all. <laughs> If he's anything like the rest of the Mannings, I mean, it's totally football first and academics and, and that's it. All the other stuff's the other stuff. I mean, their competitiveness is next level. Uh, the cautionary tale is what's happened to Ohio State with Ewens, where you shell out or somebody shelled out to get him. And he went to Ohio State because... That was the sweetest deal. And I don't know the total number, but you're taking care of mama and daddy, right? And now you transferred back to Texas. Thanks for the goodies, OHIO. I'm heading back down to Texas now. So that's that's the, the other side of it here. I mean, <laughs> vet your prospects and your investment slash endorsement pitch guy or gal very carefully. Hmm. Right. Mm. Well, I mean, if I'm if I'm the Mannings, I'm gonna say, you Arch, you get to come on the Manning cast next year. We'll pay you. We get to control the narrative. We'll ask you all the questions. It'll be fun. You get your name out there. And you don't have to deal with anyone else from outside the family screwing up with all uh, hey, the NIL Arch, stuff. Does, does Coach Saban dye his hair? <laughs> <laughs> is is he still slicking that back to show that he has some? I like Nick. Nick right now is. Pray pacing. So uh, Eli, Peyton, and Arch on the Manning cast would be electric. I- I'd tune in for that and love every minute of it, I'm sure. Here's Arch's prom picture. <laughs> Here's Peyton's high school senior yearbook. All right. Uh, Jabba Chamberlain, all things baseball next with Hale Varsity. Welcome to Hale Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hale Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Back into it, it's Tower 2, it's Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herba, we welcome in World Series champ, standout Husker, and a 12-year Major League vet, uh, Jabba Chamberlain with us. Jabba, tell you what, the old weather like this in Nebraska just screams opening day, doesn't it? Oh, 100%. If we don't have this in spring in Nebraska, it's not spring baseball then, is it? <laughs> no. You and I are both just kind of silently nodding to each other right now about uh, postponement. Now, I know Southwest Varsity had a showdown with East, and, and you guys will get a chance tomorrow, and that'll be awesome. But I'm kind of, you know, I don't know that Mama Bear has enough blankets at home to to, to put us through what would have been a 5:30 ball game tonight. <laughs> We, I mean, we were supposed to play at 10 o'clock this morning. The boys were excited because they didn't have to go to school. And now that we got canceled, they're like, oh, we have to go to school. So they get out tomorrow. But, yeah, literally, I made sure to have an extra battery pack for my for my heated jacket just in case if, uh, if it goes down. I, I don't want to get too cold. Look at you in the heated jacket. What, <laughs> you, you didn't have the, the heated socks ready either or what? <laughs> no, no, we don't have those yet, but uh, I got my heated jacket and, and everything ready. I got a soccer cap. I got it all ready. So we'll uh, hopefully it warms up a little bit tomorrow for us to get out there and be fun to, to see the boys play, which doesn't make sense, though. We have to we have to go to Omaha to play East. 
it doesn't really make much sense to me, but I guess that's the way it goes. Days of travel ball, right, where you're taking on a team from Lincoln out in Grand Island? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like, hey, this is a Miller West tournament, and you're going to put the first game that we have against a team that is literally across town that we could stay and play in Lincoln with. <laughs> Well, good luck to to the boys tomorrow. Uh, It is opening day. It is a holiday for so many baseball fans. Masters is going on, and Tiger's looking incredible. Uh, One under, you know, he's he's been a storyline as well. But, you know, your career was so much fun to to cover and to to follow. Do you have a a memory, an opening day? Where where was your first opening day? It was in New York, I assume, but take us through that, that setup. Yeah, it was actually the the last year of Old Yankee Stadium was, was the first opening day that I got. And, I mean, my first technical opening day was spent on the DL because I blew my hamstring out my first year in the minor leagues. And, but it's just, it's opening day is, is, is so special because it's, it's one, one thing that I talk to a lot of the position players about is it's the one time that they get butterflies. And I go, do you understand as, as a reliever, we get that every time we go in the game. <laughs> and so those things that they get the first day running out, and it's just, I mean, there's something lining up on the line, opening day, to know you made the roster, that you were one of the 25, well, technically 28 guys now, that made the team out of, out of everybody in the organization. It's, Opening day is special for that for that aspect, and I mean we've obviously seen online when what the, what they did to like Bobby Witt called him in, and mm-hmm. you just having you know Salvi and and Whit Merrifield there just filming it and just you know getting those words to say hey welcome to the big leagues you made the opening day roster and you know it's just something that that is so cool and and it's it, it's something that I'll never forget the you know you shoot. <laughs> I went through eleven opening days, and they, they were all they were all special in their own right. Who who took you under their wing when you got up to the big show? It, it was kind of it was kind of both because I had the opportunity to meet Roger when I was still in college. Okay, and then he came back in '07 and announced. So he was doing all of his stuff because he came back you know midway through the season, and I was hurt at the time. So when he was doing all of his stuff, getting ready to go, you know, he took us to dinner and it was just kind of one of those things where we were kind of the same person, same, you know, same build, same demeanor, you know, just what we went about it and, you know, just seeing him work and how he went about his business with somebody that I looked up to and, you know, was fortunate enough to play with him and, and, and be his teammate and his friend. And it, it was cool to see the way that he went about his business 20 plus years as a big leaguer, and to still see the way he got after it. The Rocket, one of the legends, Roger Clemens, of course, uh, we're talking about Jabba Chamberlain with us, Hale Varsity Radio. So, Jabba, as we look at uh, Major League Baseball, there's all sorts of funny stories. I was reading today in The Athletic about Zach Grinke's return and George Brett's on the golf course, and they're pairing up a, a single with uh, you know a group of three. <laughs> and... Brett's like, oh, bleep, that's that's Grinky. <laughs> so they get paired up, and that little conversation, you know, Zach is back in KC, but when Zach got to the majors, he uh, he crashed for a year with with Brett and his family. He just was he yeah. stayed he stayed in the basement. When who who helped you get settled in New York? Did you have a a roommate you crashed with before you got your own spot? No, it was actually a um, funny story is we, they put us up, you get what's called seven and seven. Okay. And so you get seven days meal money and you get seven days in a hotel to kind of figure out where you're living. Well, I ended up becoming friends with Jeremy Shockey and ended up going to his place and ended up staying there for two and a half years. <laughs> so, and so, so you and the Giants was, tied in, huh? <laughs> right, right, exactly. And so... Where where Sully landed the plane in the Hudson? Yeah, was that was literally my backyard. <laughs> Jeez, I was I, honest to goodness, I was at Super Saver when it happened, getting ready to pick up Carter from school, and my neighbor Dave called me and he's like, "Hey, are you home?" And I was like, "No." 
I was like, what's going on? He goes, well, you might want to look in the backyard. There's a plane. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and that was where, that's where Sully landed it in the Hudson. And it couldn't have been a better spot because the New Jersey, New York waterways is literally right there. Jeez. That's, that's a small, small world, man. I didn't, didn't know Sully was, uh, it was, you know, that was an incredible landing, obviously, but uh, you and Shockey and, and that was just out your window. Whoa. Jabba, some predictions here, man. Who do you like? And I've got, you know, there's the favorites and then there's some dark horses. But as we talk a little bit here about uh, this season 2022, I want to start with the AL East. Do you think it's, are you going all in on Toronto or do you think the Yanks can catch him? I mean, those are the, the two favorites heading in. I think they're, I think they're the two, two favorites going in. Obviously, you see what, what both teams have done. And, I mean, Toronto is just a young talent that they have, obviously bringing in Robbie Ray. And, I mean, losing Robbie Ray last year and, and obviously him going to the Mariners, I think, you know, that's part of what they're going to need, you know, is better is starting pitching. But from from their lineup standpoint, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And, I mean, the Yankees, obviously, you know, you go into it and, and being a Yankee, just understanding that it's, you know, win a World Series or it's a bust. And, and, and that's the way that it, that it is treated. And that's part of that organization and that's part of what it is. But it's just, it's, the AL East is going to be, but do you ever count out the Rays? I mean, granted, their payroll's not great, but every year they're there. Kevin Cash does an unbelievable job of, of managing a team. And, and Kevin Cash was a teammate of mine. And just his baseball knowledge and the understanding of the game and especially being in that division... I don't think you count them out either. I mean, obviously the two two heads of it are, are the Yankees, and but then what do you do with the Red Sox? Is Chris Sale going to come back from his rib fracture? Are they going to have what they have? I mean, it's the AL East is just it, is a dominant division in all of baseball, and and it always always has been, and it, it's been different teams, but. I don't think you count. I mean, I guess the only team you can count on the AL East is obviously the Orioles. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a given. <laughs> but yeah, I think I I think it could go one of three ways, a hundred percent. And like I said, I'm not going to count the Rays out either because Kevin Cash does it year in year out. AL Central, you know uh, those squads well. What, what's a fair expectation for KC? It's going to be a building block, I think. Okay. I think they have they they have what you know. Obviously, Bobby Witt's going to be an absolute unbelievable draw. He's going to be starting third baseman, and I'm excited to see what he can do. Mm-hmm. It's you know you give a kid a chance, and you have leaders like Salvi and Witt that just understand the game, and they're great. I mean, look at Salvi's year last year, unbelievable. And then you got Witt, who's just a consummate professional, just a great dude understands the game, knows his role, and, and he's in that position. And, you know, every year it's talked about, are they going to trade with? Are they going to do this? But, I mean, he's him and Salvi are the backbone of that team. And just to, you know, have a guy like Matheny just understand, like, hey, everybody that that's played for him and, and everybody I've talked to is just, they love him. I mean, he's a player's manager. It's what he is because he played the game. He understands the position. And I, I think... For them, obviously, I, I think it's going to be the White Sox probably that that are going to lead the Central. I mean, I think the Guardians are going to have a solid team. Obviously, you got Shane Bieber going out and and doing his stuff. So the the Central is, is going to be interesting to see. Astros and I know Seattle's got some some pop as well, but Houston's loaded up again. Hey, don't forget the Angels. Well, the Angels should be way the hell better than they are. Mm. <laughs> I mean, they just well, never... the Angels at the same time is like, and I love Mike, and he like he he's been to the playoffs one time. I know he's gonna go. He's gonna go down in our era as probably one of the best three players to ever play. Yeah, and the fact is, we never get to see him on a national stage, which it sucks because you paid him all this money. You bring in Otani, who is an absolute. He's not. I don't think he's from this planet, so he's not. And you don't have anything from the front side on the pitching aspect. And I just, 
Get this man to the playoffs. Get him Let him see help. what he can do. Yeah, it'd be nice to see him uh, during the fall for sure. Dodgers, uh, are you are you liking Milwaukee? Uh, can can San Diego survive three months without uh, Fernando and Atlanta? Do they do they repeat? You you feeling the Mets ballpark the NL for me real quick? I think the NL from the aspect. I'm born and bred a Braves fan. Thanks for TBS. That, that's exactly why. And I still am. And uh, obviously, you know, Chipper Jones is a really good friend of mine. And, and, you know, seeing Freddie in a Dodgers uniform is really weird for me. Yeah. Because I thought he was going to be that guy. He was going to be the next Chipper. And, and I think Chipper thought the same thing. And, you know, as Freddie said, when they won the World Series, sitting on the dais was like, would I think I would be sitting here without an extension? And he said, no. And at the end of the day, it's, what are you doing? Like, you, you knew you had him. He wanted to be there, and now he's a Dodger. Granted, obviously, you got a great first baseman in return, but it, it's still not a homebred guy that's been there since he's been 17 years old or 18 years old. So, I mean, I'm a huge Braves fan. I always will be. Um, I think the Mets got a chance, but at the same time, it's like, is, is the ground going to stay healthy? Mm. Obviously, that that's been something, but then you've got Max, and then he, Max might pitch till he's sixty. He could because he hasn't been hurt. He goes out, and he's I mean he's he's unbelievable. I mean that that is what it is. But I think I think from the NL East aspect, I think it's either the Mets or the Braves again. Mm-hmm. Out in the West, the Dodgers obviously. Look, I mean that lineup, their bullpen. I mean really. None of their starters need to go more than five innings because their bullpen's so deep. Jabba Chamberlain with us, Hale Varsity Radio. Jabba to wrap. Huskers got down, came back, and had a chance to win it. Couldn't do it. They had Christo on the hill for his second uh, second start. Similar struggles, but uh, what's your takeaway against UNO last night? It's kind, of, it's, it's kind of the same thing that we've talked about all year is we left the bases loaded. We need a, we need those big hits, and obviously coming off a great weekend against Ohio State, and now seeing what's what's going to go on this week. I mean, we don't even have a third starter. We we have Shea starting, and then Dawson obviously on Sunday. We don't have a Saturday guy. Is Cody going to go out there? What are they doing? I don't know. It's just we need to understand in those situations. We need a big hit. Mm. We need a big hit. We we put ourselves in great situations, but it just doesn't it does doesn't happen. Like we we shouldn't lose these games. We we shouldn't. And the team is too talented. Our coaching staff understands that. And it's as frustrating as for us as fans. I can only imagine what it is for Will and those guys to know that we have the talent, we have everything, and it's just we can't get a big hit. Well, Gomez was he he delivered one and just missed the second, you know, and then it got a little little funky afterwards. Yeah, I mean, you know, to, to hit the two run homer right there and, and and put us within one, obviously try to take the momentum and 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 sometimes homers are are rally killers too because it, you know it's, it's hit hits become contagious, and it's a hit it's a hit it's hit, but it's it, it comes down to it to where. You know, it's you know they had the, they had their meeting between themselves. They did everything, and it, it's we can't be sitting here and, and understand that what if, what if, what if. Well, well, let's get it done. You know, we have the talent, we have everything that needs to get done. You know, let's just get it done. Jabba Chamberlain with us. Jabba, we'll get caught up soon, brother. Thanks for the insight. Thanks for the MLB preview. And thanks for taking us into to your time. Uh, with opening day, bud. Sounds good, guys. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Back with you, Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. I can hear Gary Barnett right now saying, get in the hole, get in the hole on Sunday. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing this, uh, this image forward, Coach Barnett, with a key putt for Tiger 
you and Tiger look a lot alike on that tee box, don't you? In the during the warm up. I beg your pardon. I said you and Tiger. <laughs> I'm you saying, talking to me? <laughs> I'm talking to you. The swing, the distance, right? I mean, we all look great on the tee box, Coach. Well, I, I have two. I have a pair of shoes like he does. I have long <laughs> pants occasionally. I do wear a baseball cap. That's I got a club in my hand. That's about where it ends. Okay, big boy. Hey, <laughs> how excited are you for for uh, for him being back? And I know you've been watching some of his warm ups and. And uh, it's really cool to have him back at it after all he's been through. He is such a competitor. And he, I was just watching the Golf Channel just, just actually before he called and just, just talking about how competitive he is and how he studies the game and the spin of the golf ball. And, you know, he, he's a, he, he is a technician. He's, he's uh, just so thorough. I, he's without question the game's best right now. At everything, not not necessarily his play today, but just at uh, how involved and how much he loves the game, I think. Gary Barnett with us, Sale Bar City Radio. So is this your favorite weekend? Is it Masters weekend? I think so. You know, I, I'm, I'm like all the other people. I, I'm one of those guys who loves golf, and so I love to, to watch this weekend. But uh, people who don't really follow golf, watch it i mean it's it's become the the greatest golf tournament in the world and you know people who don't follow golf watch this tournament and my wife can't she loves sitting down and watching the replay of this tournament and <laughs> listen to the birds and same birds we hear every year but the recording but uh you know it's it's a uh, i think everybody watches it. and the way golf has caught on uh because of the pandemic um probably um you know, it even brings it more to the forefront, I think. Coach, with with uh, Augusta, have you been there? Have you gone to a Masters ever? Not gone to the Masters. I've played there. Really? Um, Tell me that story. Yeah, and so, I, you know, I, I'm not a fan of big crowds um, and uh, fighting all that. Uh, you know, you can see the same players at some other places. And once you play there, yeah, you know, you don't really want to go back and watch it. You want to go back and play it again. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, I'm sort of caught in between there. Well, I ran uh, into a Coach Whip the other night. He was, uh, he had just gotten done golfing. He was with somebody up at a, a having a, a drink and a piece of pizza, and I was with my family. I didn't bother him and want to interrupt uh, his uh, his pepperoni, but. Uh, I thought about asking him for you what he shot at Whisper. Uh, I, I didn't bother him, but uh, he had gotten some. Well, he's not going to tell you the truth. He's not <laughs> going to tell you the truth, Chris. What the heck? <laughs> I was seven under. What do you what, what do you want from me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know what? Uh, tell Jay Moore. I'm sorry I missed him. He was out here with with one of the guys, and uh, uh, I wasn't playing that day. But uh, okay. I know he was here. Well, Jay's incredible uh, at golf and. I talked to Jay tomorrow before the spring game, uh, and uh, for sure, for sure, say hi to him. So I got to ask, Coach. You know, we, we're getting into golf. I want to switch gears to the spring game, and what does Nebraska need Saturday? At this point in time, the coach comes out of me, and I say a very healthy scrimmage, <laughs> and that means one in which nobody gets hurt. You're down. It's the last day. You're done. The last thing you want to do is have someone get hurt that cost him the season mm -hmm. in this game. So that's, that's really number one on their minds. Um, they've seen enough of everybody for, for a, of a lot of people, but what this game usually does because it's a game, it, it brings out the gamer in some guys and you find somebody that you haven't been able to watch for sure in a game with people and the pressure of a game is close to, to it as you can get in this situation, some guys really step up, and you're 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 hoping it's one or two that you're counting on. It's probably going to be somebody that you didn't count on, and you're going, oh, look at here. And then, of course, the other thing happens too is a guy who you really want to uh, to show what he can do in a game maybe doesn't perform, and you don't get too upset about that. But you're looking for the surprise. You're looking for the for verification of what you think about a particular player. You're not worried about scheme. You just want to see how guys play and how they compete. 
few minutes here. Gary Barnett with us, Hale Varsity Radio. Nebraska's in a unique spot from a setup standpoint where it may just be offense versus defense because of all the injuries. You know, we right. don't know how healthy some of the tight ends are going to be, and you don't want to you don't want to risk that. Uh, offensive lines missing two projected starting tackles. So that's interesting. When we talk about Whipple and Raiola, the OC and the O-line coach, the new O-line coach, Apple White, the running backs coach, the new running backs coach, and, of course, Mickey Joseph, what is on those guys' plate just beyond Saturday? I mean, what, what needs to get knocked out before – you know, fall camp starts. What What are the assignments that need to be handed out for guys to work on their own this summer? Because it's going to be pretty key with all the newness for Nebraska, not only players, but also this offensive staff. Well, that, that'll be the subject of their meetings after the spring game. Uh, you know, a lot of the guys will go immediately hit the road recruiting. But uh, that'll be something that w- it, when they're not on the road or when they are meeting, that's what they'll hammer out. And they're the only ones that really know what those things are. You know, you'll see a little bit from this game, something will pop up that you need to work on. But pretty much as as spring unfolds, you've got a pretty good idea of what each guy needs to work on. And then you do a lot of research and development on the opponent. Uh, you start getting uh, – uh, you, you've got your assistants and guys watching all the film – you know, just simple game plans that you might want to think about, simple things you want to do. But mostly it's it's grades. It's about keeping yourself healthy. It's doing the right things, uh, knowing what, where the kids are, what they're going to be doing, uh, keeping in touch with them, just not breaking the rhythm and the uh, flow that you've had with them during this period of time because, you you know, you're coaching with them and it's a lot of fun and, Everybody needs a little bit of break, but then after that, you want to get back into that rhythm. And so, it, they're gonna they'll make all those decisions, and um, they'll look at the the last spring practice with like they do every practice, but maybe a little closer to this at this one, but not not so much. So, but uh, yeah, and it all varies on, on uh, who you're playing the first game, and whether there's some plans you need to put together if you're playing some unique defense or offense, you need to think through that. So that that all starts, and then recruiting is just such a, a big part of it, too. Gary Barnett's with us, Hale Varsity Radio. Coach, do you show much, or do you just get in and get out? And I ask that because it's all new for Nebraska, but you mentioned it. I mean, the first game is Northwestern over in Ireland. Yeah, well, uh, you know, what you show, you, you can show just about anything you want, and there's two ways of looking at it. You show them a lot of stuff, and that means they got to work on it all. <laughs> you know, you show them some stuff you're never going to use, and you you make the other staff work on and for hours on something that you know you're not even going to use. So there's a little bit of deceit going on there, deception. Um, but uh, and then you have some fun with it. You have some fun with that day. You 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 know you try a few things, and uh, you know you want the crowd to to be entertained as well. So. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty free flowing, you know, it's, uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to have your own stuff for Northwestern that you're going to figure out maybe after this game, after you watch theirs or as the season, un- as the fall or summer unfolds. But so you don't really worry about hiding anything. It's not like you got that much to hide anyway. Coach, you uh, thinking about going over for Northwestern, Nebraska? I uh, uh, thought about it but probably not going to do it. It's it's still available, but I'm not a fan of flying a long way right now. If I were going to go over there, I'd take my clubs and stay for a week. So well, just go a week early. That doesn't look, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. <laughs> we're uh, we're, we're going to start rowing. We, we are heading over to do shows, actually, and uh, getting all that knocked out, but I won't be able to go Good over a week early to play golf or lose golf balls, I should say. Coach, big re- <laughs> big recruiting weekend. Want to get a couple of thoughts from you. Uh, O'Shawn Mathis, you may have seen him or remember the name for, for TCU, a uh, pretty high-level rush end from, uh, you know, in the Big 12, and he's got some, some big-time schools that want him. Texas looks to be like the leader, but he's at least visiting Nebraska. You know, if you're Nebraska, your pitch is to is to, to Mathis is what? 
uh, based on he, he's such a key skill guy uh, when it comes to getting after the quarterback. Uh, what, what do you say if you're Nebraska? Well, you, you know, you, you show him your culture. You show him, um, you know, his opportunity. Uh, you you certainly uh, see how you can make him better mm-hmm. uh, and, and get that across to him in a short period of time. But, um, you know, it's going to come down to how comfortable he feels. And, um, you know, he's an older guy, so, you know, how he fits in doesn't necessarily uh, mean much. But, uh, you know, all you can do is show him your stuff and your coaches and how you can, what you can do for him. And, and then of course, what he can do for you. And it's, it's just got to marry up. Right. Chris, it's, you know, it's a crapshoot. That's uh, an older example. You have the top quarterback for 2024 in Dylan Riola. Now Nebraska has got the Riola connection with the uncle as the O-line coach. And of course, Dominic, the former center in Lincoln, but uh, Dylan's being recruited by everybody. That's Bama. That's Clemson. You have the family tie, but Nebraska has not produced a quarterback for for a while. But the key thing is, coach, is that he's at least coming on campus. Nebraska's it's not official, but uh, I don't know. Do you think Nebraska's uh, going to be in this thing or could be in this thing till the end, just because of the family tie? Well, uh, yeah, there's no question. You can't discount that at all. And. You know, they haven't had a quarterback, but guess what? They just changed quarterback coaches. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of, lot of things to sell there. And, you know, when we were selling stuff at Northwestern, it was, it was a chance to go do something nobody else has done for a long time there to, you know, to go, uh, you want to go, go put your shoes under the locker of just another great player? Or do you want to, you want to create the locker that people want to put your shoes, their shoes under? So, mm-hmm. It's a, uh, you know, that's how you sell it. And it just comes down. You don't know. It's so many things that can make a difference. And so you just try to cover all your bases. Gary Barnett with us. Coach, enjoy uh, Masters weekend. Have fun playing some golf and watching some golf, okay? You got it, Chris. Thanks. Great being with you. And we're back. Fellas, I think we could. Listen to the radio listen. On Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Yes! That's awesome! Back into it, it's Hale Varsity, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Time for Burke's Best Bets with VEASAN Sports Network's Danny Burke. Pride of Chicago with us, the Danny Burke podcast as well. And uh, Danny, did you sneak out to the bleachers for opening day, or did that not happen this year? Yeah, unfortunately, I uh, didn't have enough time to make that happen. But uh, like I was kind of saying off air, I mean, my roommates got to go. The tickets were obscenely cheaper than they usually are, anywhere from like 8 to 12 bucks, even 12 bucks to get into the bleachers. Even like last year when they had still the core squad, it was like minimum probably like 70 bucks. And let alone on opening day, you would think that it would be jam-packed. But that's just kind of the way that – uh, the excitement for the Cubs is as of this moment, but hey, not looking too terrible to start things off. Well, who's your future? Who did you go in on? Tell us, uh, break down the Danny Burke Major League Baseball uh, 2022 outlook, my friend, because you love betting baseball. You and Pete Rose. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> well, I did one, well, I did three futures bets, one for the World Series. And that was the San Diego Padres committee. Now, this team, I understand, was completely disappointing in the back half of last season, arguably the most disappointing team in baseball based on the talent that they had, not only offensively, but pitching-wise. And, look, Ted, Keith is not going to be back till June. Completely understand that. But you're getting a new manager in Bob Melvin from the Athletics who really knows how to kind of turn things around. And it's clear that the front office is investing everything into maybe not this, I mean, yes, this season, but probably the next couple as well. And you have a stellar rotation. Now, Blake Snell and you, Darvish, really had terrible years last season. I don't envision that occurring once again. You also got Musgrove, who's a stud. Mike Clevenger, if he can replicate what he did with Cleveland and get past his injury from last season. And you bring on the southpaw, Sean Manaya, who's really a strong pitcher for the A's last year. 
Uh, you bring on Luke Voigt as well, and you still have Manny Machado, and you still got a lot of other offensive threats on that team. So I'm looking at this this value for San Diego, and I'm a little perplexed that it's so high. And you could argue that the division is going to be really tough. The Dodgers could be one of the greatest teams of all time with that roster, and you're not wrong. And the Giants did really well last year, but I'm expecting some regression. I, I just feel like the Padres will live up to the hype a little bit more so this season. And if they do struggle without that season, yeah, maybe you do get some better value throughout the course of the season to bet them on the World Series. But if they end up staying afloat, because I think they're capable of it, based on the rotation, based on their talent they still have, then people are going to realize, crap, this team is really good. And they got Tatis coming back in the mix. Then the odds will probably change drastically. So I believe by the time we get to the postseason, the Padres will be in it, and they'll get nowhere near 18-1. to 1. So that was more of a value play. So I liked the Padres. And then really quick, a couple other plays I did. I, I, I bet the Phillies to make the playoffs at minus 120. They added Castellanos and my guy Schwarber. They have a fairly solid pitching staff. And I don't think the NL East is going to be incredibly tough. You already have, I mean, the Braves lost Freddie Green and you bring on Matt Olson. All right, that's a, that's, that'll suffice enough. But uh, when you look at the Mets, well, you're already dealing with an injury to the Grom. It's kind of starting all over again. And, well, the Mets are the Mets, even though if you bring on Max Scherzer. So I think the Phillies, because of the expanded postseason as well, going to six teams, have a really good shot. So I think they make the playoffs. And then the final play I made, the A's under 69 and a half wins. I just told you they lost their head coach. They lost uh, Sean Mania. They lost Matt Olson. They lost Matt Chapman. They lost everybody. They shipped off everyone. And they really are just in full tank mode. And pretty much every team that finishes at the bottom of the respective uh, division the last three years has finished under 69 and a half wins. So I'm banking that to happen with the A's this year. Danny, I'll, I want to take it to a, a Chicagoland area team, not the Cubs, though, the White Sox. I'm seeing their regular season wins total at 91 and a half. And I think crazy for thinking that, that the over is looking really good right there. It, it, it definitely would be the immediate thought, but there are some concerns with the White Sox. Now, you obviously have the injury that just happened with Lance Lynn, and is that going to hurt them in the long haul? No, but that could hurt them on a game-to-game win total basis for those uh, slots that he was slated to start, right? So those could kind of hinder you with such a high win total. You don't really have a large margin for error. Now, the good news is, as of this point, a lot of the guys that were injured last season, which consisted of some of their top offensive guys, are healthy at the moment. So hopefully you'll get a full season to get a bigger sample size of that squad. Furthermore, you do have still one of the weakest divisions, but I also think that it's not going to be as easy as it was last year. I think you're going to see a little bit more success out of the Twins and especially out of the Tigers. The Tigers got Javi Baez, so they're getting a little bit of a boost to their offense. And also, their pitching staff is actually fairly solid from some young guys they've been building up. So I don't know if it's going to be completely a steamroll from Chicago in the division. Do they win it? Yeah, more times than they won't. Of course, they will end up on top of that division. In terms of the win total, I stayed away. I, you know, if you're getting low 90, like 90, 91, I would probably gravitate toward the over. Some spots have like 93, so I was like, nah, I can't do that. That's too high. But, I mean, the Sox have enough talent to do it. Can they hit right? Can they hit on the road? And can they compete with the top team? That's what you got to ask yourself. But if you think they can, then they can for sure get over that win total. Danny Burke with us. Burke's best bets, pride of Chicago. VEASAN Sports Network to the Masters we go. Danny Gelady heat down on Tiger with those Long shot odds through 18. Tiger finished at minus one. An incredible uh, debut for him, considering everything. But uh, where else did you kind of look at here for Augusta? Yeah, I did a handful of bets here. I took Dustin Johnson at 18 to one. I took Cameron Smith at 18 to one. I took Daniel Berger, I believe, at 45 or 48 to one. Um, who else did I take? I took Russell Henley at about 60 to one. And then I took uh, Champ, Cameron Champ, at like 230 to 1. Then I also did Cameron Smith to finish top 10 at like plus 163. And then also Berger and Henley to finish top 20 for a little bit of plus money. So my hands in a couple different pots there, Schmitty. But uh, hey, Cameron Smith doing pretty solid as of this point. So we're looking all right with some of the guys that I got the flyers on. But yeah, I mean, shout out to Tiger. He had a really tough out. 
that he had a great hit with out of the rough. He ended up bogeying that hole and missing a putt. So there's been some pros and some cons to Tiger, but that's really just the inevitable ebbs and flows, not only for him in general, but after coming off such a severe injury, I think he definitely blew more people away than what I guess you would say some of the sharper betters would think. I mean, everybody and their grandma wants to take a bet on Tiger Woods. I had my uh, my sister and her boyfriend text to me to place a bet for him because they want to get involved. I'm like, all right, I can do it. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm not betting it, but, uh, you know, to each their own. So that's what we thought the last time Tiger won, but you got to think this time it's a little bit different. Well, the, the Danny Burke vig is much different. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. That's right. Danny Burke uh, with us, VEASAN Sports Network. Follow him on Twitter at Danny Burke 5 Catch his work uh, weeknights with Vizen Monday through Friday, and of course the podcast. Danny, before we get you out of here, is there any line for the Huskers spring game with the, the red and the white team, or are you seeing anything? <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen anything yet. That's what I'm relying on you guys for. I need that wink-wink insider info so we know what plays are going on so I can get a couple bucks down. That's defense likely versus offense, so I don't even know that you'll have a team. They're still trying to figure a format and all that out. In that but, case, take the offense. Right, uh, because <laughs> <laughs> how are they going to score this, right? <laughs> Daddy, we'll get caught up soon. Thanks for the time. Love it, guys. Take care. Miss us? Come here, brother. Give me a hug. Bring it in for the real thing. We're on call for you. Catch the podcast at HailVarsity.com, the ESPN Lincoln app, or download them on iTunes. Saddle up, partner. Back to Hail Varsity Radio. One final time on a Thursday, Hail Varsity presented by the Nebraska Lottery, packing up the old backpacking gear heading down to the single barrel tomorrow four to six road show friday getting you ready for the spring game get a steak get a beer get a bourbon and then uh, go catch nebraska baseball we'll be back at it double barrel uh for saturday morning weekend edition from 9 30 to 11 30 a little bit of flex schedule so uh come see us for breakfast or brunch before you head to 10th and vine Good stuff today. Enjoyed Brandon Vogel's inside. Jabba Chamberlain, great stuff on MLB and Husker baseball. Gary Barnett, great thoughts, too, on you know landing Mathis and continuing to, to grow that relationship with some of the talented quarterback that Nebraska's bringing in for the spring game. Daddy Burke and Jabba on that save at wavelength with uh, Philly, maybe, is a dark horse. And mm, I, for me... I kind of like the Mariners team as a dark horse. Maybe not to go. Maybe of, not to go win the whole thing. A lot of pop. Maybe not to go win the whole thing. But I, I think uh, they'd probably have to make some deals at the deadline. But I, I like them as at least a, a playoff team, and maybe a good shot to go win that uh, the AL West. You got to take on Houston. I, I think it's, it might be time for Houston's run in the AL West to, to come to a close. That'd be all right by me. <laughs> Same. <laughs> okay. maybe, maybe that's why it's wishful thinking from me. Cub fans rejoicing because the old chubbies are 1-0. and oh, And uh, best record in baseball right now. So good for the... Uh, <laughs> for now. <laughs> for now, for the Cubs. Tomorrow, again, single barrel, 4-6. to six. Come see us. Goodies for you. And uh, great grub. Don't forget uh, Searles and uh, Jay Moore tomorrow. Thoughts on the spring game, thoughts on the lines of scrimmage, and then the Pride of Fairbury from a bourbon distillery. Dolman is on the road for some horse racing in uh, in Jack Daniels country, so we'll we'll check in with the Pride of Fairbury, maybe on horseback, getting a bourbon tour. That's the threat. I just hope he uh, remembers how to ride horses. Before we get out of here, can I, can I get your, your take on something? There's been discussions today among me and a couple friends to leave Lincoln early Sunday morning, drive to Denver, go catch game three between the Dodgers and the Rockies on Sunday, and then catch the Lakers-Nuggets game that evening, and then drive back, make it back into Lincoln like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Monday morning. Great idea or terrible idea? You're young enough. Absolutely fantastic idea. That's what I need here's, to hear. Here's my question for you. Why not just take a train? Forget the driving. Not a bad idea either. Seriously, because you could, I don't know the schedule, but you take a train overnight. And then sleep. You get dropped off, and then you'll be there. You'll get dropped off not far from Coors, 
This is why you make the big bucks. That's a great oh, idea. I just, <laughs> I'm sick of being the only one in the family that drives the interstate. See, I, I like road trips, but I was thinking like, that's a long I don't know way what, to drive. What, what Amtrak could fleet. run you, but throw out a hundred bucks. You're not burning. Ga- I mean, gas is going to run that much anyway. Four fifty five, three eighty nine, wherever you fill up. Take a train overnight. Get dropped off in front of Coors. Have a Coors. Watch Game Three of the Dodgers. Go see uh, LeBron and his receding hairline. Hop back on a train and get back into Lincoln around uh, eleven. Done. There you go. Talk to you tomorrow from the Single Barrel at four. Thanks.